So yesterday afternoon, I actually sat for my AWS security specialty certification and it was after work here on a Friday afternoon and didn't know what to expect, but just really wanted to get this one out of the way as I've been actually studying for two to three months now. And so when I woke up this morning, because with an AWS exam, you don't find out your results typically right after you take it, you have to wait a day or two. So I found out that I actually passed. And so whew, definitely was a uh, breath of or a sigh of relief, I should say, because these exams are uh, pretty tough. And the crazy thing about it is all of the questions aren't really graded. So I'll show you here real quick what I mean by that. But just want to take a few minutes. It won't be a long video today and just share some of my thoughts about this exam. So let's go ahead and get it. So as you can see here, right here on the page that this certification validates one's expertise in creating and implementing security solutions in the AWS cloud. 65 questions was kind of right on par. 170 minutes you get there. And of course, as most of us know, you can either test at a Pearson View testing center or in the comfort of your home if you've got a quiet place with nothing around. So took mine actually here at home and was um, appreciative of that. But really the first thing that I want to say is that especially with security, this exam, many of us, as we know, our organizations are either a hybrid workforce or full-time remote from home. But regardless of whether that was the case, or if you had to go into work every day, they preach that security is everyone's responsibility. Um, so for me, I've been fortunate enough to be or working inside of an AWS environment for the past four to five years. And grateful of that. I know everyone doesn't have that opportunity, but with preaching that security, that mindset, um, any of the resources, solutions that, you know, my team and I actually implement, we have to keep security in mind. So I didn't start at ground zero um, while studying for this exam. It's just what I want to say. So first off, you have to know that we don't always need to just start from page one. Uh, we can kind of fill in the gap and start with the knowledge there. But to fill in that gap, you actually have to know what the exam that's in front of you uh, entails. So if we go right over here to um, actually one of the links before we get there, we'll see that there's actually, we see 13 exams on this page. Um, AWS, probably about three weeks ago, Data Engineer Associate is a beta. It's gonna be open for testing right after Thanksgiving, and they're gonna be retiring this um, data analytics specialty. So kind of, there'll be an overlap where both of them are available after the new year, but I think in April, this one will be retiring. So really 12 certifications um, to take there. Um, so really you can actually find out what's on the exam by just reading the exam guide. And as we can see here, uh, first it starts off with kind of who should take this exam or an ideal candidate. But this exam had some questions like when I referred to earlier that they're not graded. Um, typically all of them, of course, were multiple choice, some with multiple responses, such as pick the best two or pick the best three answers there. So this included 15 questions that are on score. So sometimes when you finish the test and you don't feel like you pass, um, I shouldn't say go into the exam, not thinking that you're going to do your best, but um, it's a little bit crazy not knowing which one of the pool of questions that you took out of the 65 will or won't count. And of course the 750 passing score, but more important than just knowing the test criteria, at least to me is like I said, just knowing what the test encompasses. So, we see the various domains that are going to be tested on here, the domains one through six, as along with the corresponding uh, weighted material there. So for me, I actually, um, along with that knowledge that I have, of course, at work, I did apply some of this to a sandbox environment that we have at work to test and try out uh, some of the implementations, some of the storage options there. But I supplemented that actually with um, Stefan's a course here on Udemy. Uh, Stefan Merrick does a great job at breaking it down. And I actually followed this with my own personal account to get a more immediate hands-on experience with some of the things that on my job I don't primarily work with.
but really that bridging the gap or identifying where um, some of my weaknesses were, were actually not saying that you should or shouldn't spend your most time here, uh, but it was actually fortunate to me or beneficial in the test is um, this data protection domain. And if we come back here, we'll see that it's 18%. But some of the topics uh, we could go down here and see what's that domain five, that's four. It talks about things like TLS, uh, VPN, of course, being a network guy, have a, a great sense of that API calls. But when we get down to the EBS, the EFS, the, the DynamoDB, RDS, um, parameter store versus secret manager, uh, which one would you use? Of course, the encryption the various keys, just all of this really um, can get clustered up in your mind. It can be confusing the way they word it. A lot of the answers may sound the same, but they ask for which one of these might be the most cost effective or those type of things you have to kind of know. But he did a great job, really, if you follow along at um, detailing it and um, just kind of pointing out the similarities as well as the differences of each of these components. And you can see here just the sheer number of videos that he has to follow along. Some of this has uh, supplemental resources, PowerPoints, different websites to go to. Um, so just a lot of uh, knowledge to be able to fill in the gap. And these videos, what's that, 204 through almost 50 videos just for that one domain. And that was very uh, beneficial to me. And like I said, uh, it's it's nothing wrong with going from zero to 100, um, studying the, the entire blueprint and um, comprehensively you should, whether it's reading, whether it's labbing it up yourself, or whether it's um, supplementing that with videos and uh, that type of on-demand material. Um, really think to yourself and be honest with yourself um, with where your shortcomings are, or when you read through or you try some things, which one of them just doesn't seem to stick. And just repetition, uh, like many things in life, uh, the more times that you do something or try something, it tends to stick. And so for me, the the sandboxing some of these solutions and seeing actually um, how it's implemented um, was more valuable than anything. For me, also having the networking specialty and the um, the solutions architect professional, these 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 exams that are specialty or professional to me, it seems like the questions when they come out are more geared towards architecting a solution or implementing a type of design um, versus the associate level where it, it not to say it can be book knowledge type questions, but choose, you know, the best, almost like um, when I was taking my CCIE versus my CCNA, of course, CCIE, you got to lab everything up, configurations and things like that, which is totally night and day between multiple choice or, um, you know, just four liners. The same holds true here, at least in my opinion, where I feel like this is all multiple choice. But to me, the, the questions are more they're geared towards a different type of a solution, customer, uh, organization in mind. So take that with uh, what you may. But overall, this test, I think, did an excellent job of assessing a candidate's uh, experience and knowledge of each of these domains that, that we saw here. So it's pretty cool. So now we see here, of course, back in the portal, the um, expiration date is three years out. Um, so really... I'm excited, like I said, again, to wake up and know that, that I passed this one. Felt pretty good going to sleep, to be quite honest. But like I said, there were about eight to nine questions where I was like, ah, don't know if that one was exactly uh, the right one or not. But went into the test very confident. I feel that, like I said, the studies supplemented just my knowledge these last three to four years of um, working primarily with network and security solutions five to six years in an AWS environment, but didn't um, take that for granted at all. I went into my studies and practices uh, as if I didn't know anything with an open mind. And like I said, this this is what worked for me. And so I definitely suggest if you get a chance to check out uh, this course, and he has probably a, a video playlist for all of the AWS certification. So I think Stefan does a great job of that. But at the end of the day, like I said, I, I do encourage each and every one of you, uh, if you take one of these specialty level or professional certs to supplement that with some hands on experience in the lab, uh, because it might make a wealth of difference to just, you know, click 
when you're sitting at that exam, something that you not only saw, but actually put your hands on the keyboard and code it yourself. So again, that's my take on this certification. Like I said, it wasn't easy, but glad that this one's out of the way. And so what's next for me is I'll probably look at the DevOps path here next. So, but as always, I want to thank each and every one of you out there for rocking in here with me today. And until next time, stay safe, take care of yourselves. Peace. Mm -hmm.